seven IGT. Um, Miguel's been uh, made an honorary Microhams member quite a few years ago because of his uh, satellite expertise. And uh, recently we discovered that he has this very, very cool trick where he operates his entire station from anywhere in his house or his car or anywhere he's at um, over the wireless internet. So I thought this would be an excellent talk and because every when I actually sat down and saw it myself, I was like, this is very cool. He can literally operate from his bathroom. <laughs> so without further ado, Miguel. OK. Hola. Hello. I think he's right. Uh, he discovered and uh, he found my trick that I walk to the bathroom to operate. So, anyway, uh, I'm Miguel Mayorga, KC7 IGT. I've been in hand for quite some time already. Um, I also have a Mexican license. So, all these uh, start with the uh, dream about uh, operating a station in Mexico, basically. Um, Due to the fact that I was living in to in apartment complex, and when you live uh, in those conditions, well, it's no antennas, right? And uh, where I was living, basically, in, in the uh, operation. So uh, when I just the uh, TS2000 was uh, basically a uh, all band radio, you know, basically carries HF, two meter, four forty. 1.2 gig, which I don't have, but you can buy those those uh, options, right? Um, for me, it was the best radio to uh, get to uh, an apartment complex. Then, believe it or not, I was able to uh, put a vertical wire, and then um, basically everything started from there. I discovered that my uh, TS2000 was able to uh, operate via your computer without any, uh, basically, uh, thinking it too much, you know. Sometimes uh, a lot of radios need uh, interfaces, very complicated that some people don't understand. So I discovered that, then I started playing with the computer back and forth, and the uh, idea came that I can operate my radio from somewhere else. And how many of you guys uh, um, are being uh, experiencing remote stations? Uh, anybody uh, here? Pretty much, huh? And anybody that does not run remote stations, that um, how many how many people here think that is uh, pretty simple, and how many people think that is very 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 uh, difficult? You know, so I think uh, a lot of people think that it's very difficult. Well, let me let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, <laughs> so that, that is that's that simple. Um, I'm gonna have a demo here very, very quick and. Uh, I can wait to get here to play with the. Uh. <laughs> so basically, a couple questions. You know, what is a remote station? Uh, well, as I call it, a remote station basically have a, a station away from from you. Uh, basically, like uh, Kenny said, in the bathroom, you can operate in the bathroom and your station on the, on the chat. So why do we want to operate remotely? Well, one, I already said it. Uh, you know. I was leaving it on antenna, so basically I can get this station and put it in a in a remote station with uh, big antennas, big towers. Um, so basically, um, that's um, that's why you want to operate remotely. Uh, the key elements that you need uh, is pretty simple. You just uh, need a computer that is hooked up hooked up to the uh, internet. And uh, these days, uh, the radio nowadays are capable that uh, you can control them over your computer. Um, back then, that came with the 520 radios. Well, sure, there was no uh, capabilities in that. Now, more and more, every radio that I know, I mean, like as Scott was saying, was talking, you can operate pretty much every radio. The K3, the K2s, um, the ICOM radios, I mean, 756s, 46s, so forth and so on. So the key elements is a computer, the rig and interface. Uh, interface. Uh, the interface basically is to uh, 
see the PTT and also get the audio, isolate the audio from your radio to your computer. Antennas and uh, on the remote station elements, you need basically a very, very uh, old computer like I'm running at home. It's pretty much a painting tree. I call it a pretty old computer. Uh, it has to be um, mining in specifics calls uh, for 128 mega, mega RAMs in memory, so it runs pretty good. If you have a faster computer like, uh, that you can run as a server, even better. So, so don't think you need a, a very, very fast computer. I only tried it on uh, Windows XP. I'm not sure if anybody that runs uh, remote stations are running it on Macs or uh, Linux. I never experienced any of that, which this works, so why bother for me? Um, so basically, you need uh, the sound card, two uh, ports, one for uh, controlling your, your radio, so you can uh, change frequencies, bands, and all that. And then the other one, the second one, you, you will need it to, uh, to uh, press the PTT. Software needed uh, for, for this, basically I run um, Handrail Deluxe, it's free. Um, I know about others, you will see some uh, pictures about the others, but pretty much I'm sticking with this. Why? Well, one is free, so you know it's pretty good excuse, right? And it runs pretty good. And not only does that, I mean, it does even the uh, digital modes. You can integrate uh, different um, modes like PSK31, like they were talking. Uh, you can even do CWY, uh, so forth and so on, all those uh, digital modes. Uh, for audio, I found three different programs that they work for me. And I'm sticking with one, and I will tell you why. Basically, I used, uh, long ago, I started this, like, basically in 2002. I was running that meeting. It did pretty well for me. It was running pretty good. And then I switched to uh, Skype. Uh, Skype did pretty good, but it has some delays. And it's kind of complex, because it needs to uh, hook up to a server. And uh, I found later on, Basically, um, IP Sound is another program that we're going to go and see. For internet connection, you need, um, you know, the connection breaks, then nobody is there to, to fix it. So, uh, broadband 256K upstream works better. And uh, static IP, basically, you, you need to be able to find the, uh, your computer over the internet. So don't try to hook up uh, to uh, a wireless net right now, like you have right now, unless you can use uh, some of the ways that you, you know how. Uh, what type of rig I pretty much uh, discussed, uh, TS-2000. TS I studied it with the uh, FT7, A, A17, but this is a 100 radio, so I'm sticking with it. Uh, the sound control audio, I see in some uh, interface. So basically, the interface that you can use is the ones that you run uh, the digital mod for voice. So that's a picture of my station right there. At that time, uh, when I created the slide, I took a picture, and like you can tell right there, I'm not a photographer. Uh, I'm missing half the radio, I think. So I need some lessons on that. But anyway, and you can see it's on uh, 12 uh, meters right there, CW. Um, you can see the rig blaster, which is my um, interface for the sound and PTT. And the other uh, Meritron that you see is to keep my amplifier. Uh, that's pretty much, yeah, I, I can say that I'm not a photographer. You can see the, uh, the picture. Pretty much see, uh, if I go back, you can see the frequency, 24, 80, 92. If I go back, you can see the same frequency I was using that. And down below, you can see I was running the DX cluster. And I was trying to work the VP6DX uh, at that time. So that program to me has been uh, really, really helpful um, 
operate in my remote station. A uh, cool story is that I was hunting for a VP6DX, and surely I can look at my log and prove you that I work uh, VP6DX on uh, some of the uh, bands, uh, basically uh, phone and CW. It was uh, very challenging to work uh, from 15 meters to 10 meters. I didn't get to work 10 meters, but I did uh, 12 meters. Um, Basically, I, w I was coming from work one day, and I have to stop in an in area to work uh, VP6 uh, DX, and I did. So for me, it's, it's quite, quite interesting how you can do it and work DX of a remote station. The antenna considerations that you need, very much anything, anything that you have is better than nothing. Um, you know, like I was saying before, I, I usually have a, I started it with a vertical wire that I, I did myself. It did work for a couple of bands, uh, 40, 20, 10, and I think 15 too with the, the antenna turning on. But if you have a, a beam antenna, actually it works better, right? So multibands works better uh, and I get to the uh, advanced options that so you need antenna antenna uh, switches that you can switch to the antennas. The TS2000 you can switch between one antenna and basically a vertical and a tri-band beam. So you have the capabilities to change to, uh, to a vertical um, to a beam. So the advanced options that you can you can do is the remote control and the antenna switches. On the remote control, I can remote my station. Basically, I can do satellite for my station, and I've been doing it from a, from a remote area. I, I don't have it quite set up for um, for my tri-band yet, which is coming, I think. Uh, I've been working satellite. Basically, I uh, bring all the software to operate the uh, rotor and bring the software to operate the, uh, the shift doppler. And it does it pretty good. You know, so I basically run two programs, one that controls the radio, and it does the doppler, doppler effect. And the other one that tracks the antennas, basically tells the, the, uh, the antenna, say, here's the satellite, point it to that direction. And I've done some quite, quite some time. Uh, I, I've been done doing that for quite some time. I took a trip to California in December for Christmas. And I was able to uh, talk to my brother in Mexico over the computer. And, and he didn't believe me that I was talking over my computer, you know. He figured, you have a radio in your car, so let's see if we can have uh, uh, propagation on 20 meters. Well from uh, Guadalajara to uh, California, 20 meters was down, but uh, all the way to Seattle was open. So it was pretty, it was pretty amazing that he goes, no, you're from, you're you operating from your car. I said, no. I was, a, I was able to uh, run it from, from my computer. So the remote station again, um, you just need the basics. Um, I. Um, running it with this laptop. You know, any laptop basically that can be uh, higher than Pentium 4, I will recommend, you know, so you can process all the uh, commands faster. And the remote station will, will uh, reply quicker. Uh, Windows SP, Hamburger Deluxe for, uh, for the remote. remote. Um, Hamburger Deluxe, what, what I like it is that you go there, uh, set up uh, the remote station, put your password and everything. You have a password that you can get in, so nobody get, nobody else can get a, on your station, pretty much. So, IP sound for um, for sound. I will really recommend handsets. Otherwise, uh, you know you're gonna be picking the distortions from microphone microphones, and you get you're gonna get distraction. So pretty much 
headsets works the best. Uh, for internet connections, I mean, people that are sitting in here pretty much can uh, steal the uh, Wi-Fi from, from this area, from hotspots, from cafes, or whatever. And I'm usually using uh, the wireless from uh, Verizon, so it's basically a cell phone. And basically, it can be anywhere within the, uh, the United States, where, wherever they have a, a, a cell phone service. Uh, other programs that I found that I don't use anymore is T TRX Manager. Uh, uh, that program also has the capabilities of running a remote station. The other one is uh, R IRV. I don't know if you guys saw it on uh, QST about 2001, 2002. Those guys have been running a, a station for quite some time. I was uh, engaged on that a little bit, and then I pull out and do my own. But it was cool that those uh, stations are sitting down in Virginia, New York, and I was able to access from the West Coast. Um, stations in Europe that you cannot get uh, here in, in the U.S. Uh, another thing that I saw on the, that I haven't tried on magazines, QST actually is, is another one that uh, called CTR Pocket, basically with your pocket uh, handheld, you can use uh, your radio and remote that over the uh, Bluetooth. Let me switch this and see if I can give you a demonstration about how it works. Hopefully it works. And now it's broken. <laughs> it becomes... There we go. So I start the program, and as you can see, I'm ready to connect to a TS-2000 over the remote port. Um, let's see if we can get it to connect. And basically you need your IP address right here. You need your port, you need uh, your username, and your password. And if I, anybody wants my password, come and tell me. So. <laughs> um, I'm using a static IP. I think what you can do use uh, is, I, I don't know about the service, but it's the no IP, uh, yeah, I think you, yeah, correct. I haven't, I haven't tested, to be honest with you, so that will be uh, some of the uh, complications that you might run into. It, it worked good? Okay, so that's proof that it works. So let's try to connect, guys, and see if uh, we can do it. And voila, it says, uh, bienvenido. So well, that, that message is for me, right? So <laughs> it says, uh, "Any problem, please report to this address." So and as you're gonna see, uh, it's gonna tell you which port you want to select, either port one or two. Uh, I'm using port one to control the radio, and uh, port two uh, to um, to control the PTT. So let's go and say yes. No, this is in uh, my house in Seattle, uh, here in Renton. So here, this is local. Um, that's one of the future things that my brother and I were talking about, uh, putting a remote station for good uh, down in Mexico. Um, basically, what I like is that here in the US, you cannot go down and work the Europeans, like 70, 89, perhaps, you know. And because I have a Mexican call sign, then then I will be able to operate uh, other countries, basically. So that's the objective. The you say again? The it should be, yeah. Not from here. So I will be using my uh, Mexican call sign. So basically, uh, that it is. Uh, let's bring the sound. As I tell you before, that's the IP sound interface, and he also 
uh, works as a remote station. So basically, you put an address, uh, IP address, which is the same, and the port number, and then it recognizes. So let's go knock. Actually, you didn't hear that. Let me see if I can get the volume up. Let's see if uh, we can pick up any stations. See I'm, how I'm uh, changing frequencies right there. Correct. Any answers for you? Basically, uh, as, as you um, plug all the address and everything, basically you have those two talking. And when it recognizes this, let's see if we can uh, put the volume. seconds yeah so it's pretty fast so it's no delays you cannot even tell that it's delays here I can see that it's delays because the connection that I have um, I believe if I were running the uh, the wireless it can go faster this is only a uh, hundred and twenty eight uh, kilobytes so if we run uh, wireless we can go up to probably one meg probably does anybody uh, measure the speed here that can tell us the speed? But anyway, higher than that is better, guys. Yes. Yeah, the, the, everything is uh, HRD. Um, it's pretty simple. Let me see if I can uh, tune a CW station, RTTY or something. I can hear some CW stations right there. Right there. You can hear some of the stations right there. Let's see if we can pick up boys. Any frequency that you guys know that somebody's talking right now? <laughs> boys? Let's go to 20 meters, but um, if you can see the mouse right here, you have a DX cluster, you have a logbook, 
you have uh, satellite cap capabilities, which it, it comes up with this uh, TS2000. You have uh, SW data. Now we're in uh, 20 meters right there. Let's go to USB. Let's see if we can hear something. There we go. Let me see if I can uh, hear a much louder station. and see what uh, they can tell us what's on the band right there you can see them uh, real quick uh, you can see all the uh, spots and something that I like is that look at the frequency we're operating right now is 14 200 and look at that the uh, the first DS cluster the frequency is uh, 14 190 and if I press that with one click it, it'll take it to that frequency right away which it did. So it's pretty fast. See that that was the question I was waiting for for someone to answer, by the way, but anyway. Um here's a little, another story. Um say again? Okay. The question is that how do I plug a CW keyer to this here? Well, the ray is not here, right? But actually, you can do it. Um, someone already talked about the uh, Winky. Um, and let me tell you a little story. The hardest for me to work, uh, the hardest van to work. BP6DX, it was 40 meter CW. And it was 10 o'clock on Sunday. It was 11 o'clock on Sunday, and I go, you know what? I got to go to bed. I got to go to work tomorrow. So, what I did, I said, you know what? I have to work this station. So, I took my laptop to bed, basically. <laughs> so, I just, told, I just told the wife, you know what? I got a new companion today, so <laughs> sorry for the inconvenience. But basically, uh, the uh, the one that I uh, was wanted to work it was the uh, VP6 uh, DX on 40 meter CW. But I didn't have a keyer. I didn't have a, a keyer on my on my bed, right? So this this software has the uh, capabilities of bringing CW to your fingertips. And let's see if we can try uh, just to uh, bring the uh, the program. And someone already talked about the uh, DM DM uh, 780. So let's see if we can bring it up. And you can do it. And again, the software is for free, and it does everything. You can beat that. You can. 
So the faster your computer is, of course, it'll bring the programs faster, right? So that's why I recommend a faster computer. So anyway, let's see if it comes. All right, let's go. I'm operating Windows, guys, so bear with me. Has anybody really run um, a remote station in Linux, perhaps? Nobody? Look at that. It also keeps everything in memory. So right there, and because I have it already, already programmed, uh, it opens the radio. You can see the frequency up above. But basically, um, you have to open the configuration button. And if I go to the ham radio deluxe, you have to uh, open the server. Um, let me see if I can find it. You got to go to tools, and then you you have to open the IP server. So it talks to uh, the di digital mode, which is the uh, DM780. Uh, so it talks to the software. So then that this software takes the frequency from HR HRD and um, and the PTT and all that. So you have to say, uh, yeah, it's running right there. So, so if we go back here. We take this. You can see that uh, you you have a plain CW. You have a CW uh, command and and the win key right here. So you just need to configure that right there. Which uh, port is your win key connected to? So then you can do it. I haven't tried. I don't have it. But which I did try. Um, Anyway, to finish my story, I was able to work from this setup, uh, VP6DX and 40 meter CW, from this setup. So I think it was a great, great achievement for me uh, to work VP6DX. You can see the different modes that it works. Um, Say again. I didn't hear the question. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hear the question. <laughs> so anyway, um, you have the capabilities to uh, do dig digital modes. And in fact, I, I done CW and P PSK. I try um, RTTY trying to get uh, the BP60N, and I didn't. I didn't achieve anything, but that's a little demonstration about how it works. You know, um, my setup is pretty simple. I I, th I think I call it simple. Um, I started it with the uh, box that we were talking before. Uh, I don't recommend box. You know, I recommend really the the PTT. And one recommendation that I have is uh, basically bef before you go to a remote station. Basically try to operate your station within in range so you can see what it's doing so you can learn. Uh, because wh when I was trying CW, my um, the PTT was lack for like forever. And I say, why why is lacking? You know, it's um, the PTT is off but the uh, physically in the radio was uh, was keen. So you have to really uh, learn the software in order to operate so you don't make interference to anyone or uh, damage your radio. The guys in Virginia, um, I know that several, several times they, they look for uh, for money to repair the radio because a lot of people probably don't know how to operate it and uh, something happens. So you have to really learn about your radio and then go, go on a, a trip or the coffee shop or whatever. But actually, it's been working great for me. Let's see. Um, yeah, go ahead.
So the question is that if my SWR, you can read the SWR, you can read the uh, ALC, you can read the power. Um, basically, you can read the different um, different readings on your radio. Yes. And let me see if I can show you that. Um, if I take uh, the um, DX spot, I thought I have it, but uh, you, you can program that to any uh, any of your needs, basically. So if you go to options, S meter. You can even program your memories. But the, the, uh, the answer is yes. Um, you can do it. Any more questions, guys? Now that I'm going to answer, but anyway. <laughs> Bill? Correct. Yeah, the one at home is, uh, is running as a server. Uh, you have to configure the IP address, the uh, port, the uh, firewall, for sure, you know. Make sure that uh, you open the firewall uh, with this program. And then um, on this here, you run the same thing. The uh, HRD uh, has been uh, running on beta for quite some time, the uh, 3.5 um, version. And they've been doing beta testing for quite some time. I actually have like different versions, and I, as I change, I, I lost myself sometimes within the change because I don't know how they lay it out. So sometimes I stick like like this is an old one. I have my other laptop that I really uh, hope at home. This I brought because it's cool, and I thought I was gonna look cool. So, but anyway. But anyway, I uh, I tried to run the the most recent recent um, copy of the Veda. So that's that's that. Um, I'm not sure if we can um, put a radio in two meters, and maybe we can put a I can put my uh, radio to a repeater. Maybe I can access it. Huh? That will be cool. Huh? You guys want that? Can we do that? Let's see if we can do it. Let's go to a friendly repeater. Do you guys know friendly repeaters around here? Okay. See, this un this is unusual. Um, trying to change frequencies and uh, it's, it's taking a little bit. But anyway, while it's, it's doing that, and I program a repeater. Let's just uh, finish some slides about. Uh, you know how how uh, HRD looks. You know, pretty much I show you uh, my configuration. You can the ni nice feature of this is that you can configure different colors for different charts and different uh, bars. And that's basically basically the dig digital master 780 that's running PSK um, TXR uh, TRX manager. Um, I worked this one for quite some time because uh, my brother and I we were running a remote station in Mexico. But I basically want to uh, run a TS2000 that you can uh, shut the radio. And before it was a FT1000, uh, we were not able to uh, switch the radio off, and we want that capability. And we were running this one, but uh, HRD is, is is better for me. That's the one I was telling you, the TCR Pocket PC. Um, you run pretty good, I think, um, for what I can. Uh, I haven't tried it, but it looks cool. Electraf, uh, I pull from the web. Uh, you can run a Mac. You can run a Windows. I like that um, interface. You know, it looks uh, similar to the real radio. Anyway, uh, let's try a repeater. Um, can you say it uh, six nine eight? Now let's 
go on. I usually use uh, this remote station for HS more more than anything. I never use it for two meters, so bear with me. Um, need to find the tones. Anybody know the tones? Let's see if I can find the tones within this. Oh, that's the X tone. Okay, right here. See, I haven't used it on VHF. Uh, I can prove it, right? That's the best thing. So that's 100, we said. Let's uh, plug the microphone here. Let's see if we can. It's taking a taking a little time. I don't know why. I think the connection is so slow here. Maybe because I'm inside. Can I even see the PTT bottom? I think I did. I think I did. That's weird. I cannot hear the audio anymore. Let's see. Let's try it again. For some reason, I'm I'm not seeing the uh, PTT right here. This should be uh, orange. 